Are you guys ready to cook? If you think your cooking dominates the kitchen, then you are just as hopeful as the cooking competitors that entered the competition in Season 9 of Gordon Ramsay's Master Chef. This has to be the most intense, flavorful, and emotional season that has been aired yet. Every challenge made the biggest impact on everyone that was a contestant. Determining the next Master Chef was probably the hardest thing that Gordon, Aaron, and Joe had to do this season. This is a tough decision. So much to think about. Beginning Bake Off are you challenging me to a bake-off, bish? Yes, I am challenging you to a bake-off. In the premiere of season 9 of MasterChef, there were many competitors with incredible creativity and ideas for their signature dishes. Two people really stood out when they came in to determine their position with one of the MasterChef mentors. Shanika and Cynthia were two opposite personalities and they really shone through when they both decided to do the most shocking thing for the judges. They decided to bake for their first dish. I'm shocked. That was a big shock to Chef Gordon, Aaron, and Joe. It was a big shock to see both competitors who baked desserts so well in such a short amount of time. Short like her shortcake, luck had fallen for Cynthia. Yeah, better luck next time. Shanika had won and got two offers, but decided to sport Team Joe for the season. Oh, they begged me to join their team. Begged me. Gordon Ramsay Recreations Ah, Gordon Ramsay! In episode 3, three competitors recreated their favorite MasterChef's famous restaurant dishes for their first dish. Like Shanika and Cynthia, another competitor decided to impress Gordon Ramsay with his favorite baked dish from his restaurant, sticky toffee pudding with dates. Again, all three judges had been astounded at how insane of a choice Derek had made for his first dish, especially for a dessert that was supposed to take up to three hours long. You're insane. But Derek planned to win over Gordon Ramsay with his rendition of the dessert in 45 minutes. Racing to get everything done at the last second, Derek managed to finish his sticky toffee pudding. But had it won Gordon over? The suspense is killing me! It definitely did, and for the first time, Chef Ramsay gave three of his aprons to Derek because of how amazed he was of him for recreating a difficult dish of his. Team Gordon for the win! Oh my god, it's Gordon Ramsay! Crab Carnage we're crab people now. It takes a lot to be where these chefs were at, especially if they had to prove to keep their aprons from their mentors. Some quit their jobs, others dropped school. But what if one had literally sacrificed their life? Do you like seeing me suffer? Because you know I'll bleed for you. Early in the competition, the judges tested the chefs for technique by having to remove meat from crabs. Most were confident about shucking meat from them, while others were very intimidated to boil it in the first place. One person stuck out even more than the rest, and that was Shanika. Even though she always said what was on her mind, she never told anyone her weaknesses. Not even her allergy to crabs. She worked through her allergy to show that she was tough and had willpower to make it to be top chef. Nothing can stop her. Wedding Washout I love weddings. Drinks all around. After the captains, Junie and Julia, had won the previous challenge, they were able to pick teams to cook for the previous MasterChef winner, Sean O'Neill, with his fiance. The next challenge was to have them cook for his fiance's wedding. But there was a catch that the captains had chosen. Both captains had to switch their colors and be on the team that they did not choose. There was a lot of things that were questioned and confusing. I'm so confused. A lot of people felt a bit of cold feet on the blue team. Junie eventually gave up his position of captain to Taylor, who stepped up and took control of the havoc that was ruining their chances and Sean's wedding. But it didn't stop there. The blue team had struggled to find communication, which caused mass confusion for the team. Even Gordon was frustrated from it and helped play things. The Clark Kent of the team, Matt, forgot multiple times the potatoes. Gordon himself declared him as Potato Head. Look, I'm Picasso! Yeah, I don't get it. Christina Tozzi Challenge I did not live up to the challenge. Baking is a very serious thing to do for a competition because it involves a lot of precision and accuracy of measurements. It is a form of chemistry after all. So in episode 11 during the elimination round, the special guest was Christina Tozzi, the cupcake queen herself. Oh, hey! The judges had decided to let Christina help. She determined the loser of the elimination round by seeing who made the best cupcakes. The target was painted on Mark, the youngest contestant, because he had gone against his team's and his mentor's advice with how to cook a certain sauce a very essential way. You're not listening, man. The other contestants focused very hard and made their best cupcake taste and look good. But how many of them were actually good to eat? Mark's cupcakes did not do him justice and he had forgot the rest of his cupcakes. He definitely burned himself with that challenge. But if there was one person who impressed Christina, it was Samantha with her famous raspberry lemon cupcakes. She really claimed the title of Cupcake Princess. 
This is like Willy Wonka stuff, man. <laughs> Unexpected win in MasterChef history. Unexpected, this is. Teamwork is an important part of success in certain areas of work. It was especially important in episode 14 of MasterChef season 9. Two teams had to prepare lunch for the United States Air Force. Though the leaders of the teams had felt confident, they were constantly pummeled by doubt from their teammates. Who doubted me? They weren't flying high after they had gotten scolded by their mentors. The red team got caught by Gordon with poorly cut asparagus, which got him to show more of his good side. With the previous doubt about the meat on the blue team, they had started putting their food out raw. No, whoa, 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 it's raw, man. Which thankfully, Joe had brought to their attention. Emily felt more and more threatened because Shanika had told her she was going to get in trouble, but after which the feud between Shanika and Emily definitely scorched more. Both teams endured the lunch rush of Air Force pilots and the result drove down from the sky. History was made on Master Chef. Both teams had tied. What does that mean? What is it, a tie? What's going on? Big Joe Bake Off Battle. So it looks like we've got a bake-off. A competition isn't a competition without a little rivalry. Fiery spirits to find out who is better than the other makes challenges a lot more fun. In episode 14, after such a defeat from the tiebreaker, the blue team got put up for an elimination round. Emily, the team captain, scored down her position on Joe's team and challenged Shanika head-to-head -to, -head to bake a black forest cake. Joe realized he had chosen two strong and opinionated women for his team. They constantly taunted each other while they were interviewed, trying to be overly confident than the other to show that they were more of a chef and a baker than the other. They also found out that Chanika was allergic to chocolate. What? Once they had gotten close to the end, Emily's cake fell over in the chill blaster and the layers of her whipped cream got pressed out. They both raced the clock to get their cakes decorated and by the last stroke made it to the judging table on time. There were some disappointments from the judges, but the loser of the elimination challenge was Emily. She had let her anger and Shanika get to her. Don't let it get you. Oh, thanks for that. Brilliant advice. Leftover dinners. Throw it in a pot, add some broth, a potato. Baby, you got a stew going. It's hard to try and find things to do with leftover pieces of food, to try and make a meal out of it. So in this episode of MasterChef, the contestants were dealt with leftover ingredients that most chefs in kitchens do not use for meals in the kitchen. There was another surprise for the contestants, and that was Chef Gordon Ramsay entering the challenge. All the contestants were pumped up to cook alongside Ramsay. I'm pumped! It gave them something to consider for how they would manifest their own recipes, but also distracted them from their work. Once time was up, the first person to present their meal was Gordon. An appetizer, entree, and dessert. Who else other than Gordon to cook such an amazing three-course meal from leftover ingredients? Put that in a doggy bag and take it home. Impress or distress? Sorry, I was trying to impress you. Nothing is as intense as trying to get a good review from the best cooks. And it gets so intense that my nose starts bleeding. But what about the people who took the time to train those best cooks? In this episode, the contestants were pressured to try and impress not only their mentors, but their mentors' mentors. Jonathan Waxsmith, Lydia Bastianic, and Daniel Boulot all gave the competitors the challenge as well as the final results of their cooking. Ashley and Cesar made a good example of teamwork. On the other hand, Jaron and Samantha struggled. At the last moment, they put their dish together beautifully. Both dishes received very, very good reviews from the chefs. Lamb versus pork. Who won over the famous chefs? I don't know, you tell me! Cesar and Ashley had won with their well-combined spices in their pork chop heritage dish, as well as their demonstration of team effort. Hey, that was some good teamwork, Brian. Spoiler alert! From the roots to the finale. I need to get in touch with my roots. Figure out who I am. There is a lot that most people go through to get to their dreams, but these last three contestants had made it through with the inspiration of their roots. And that is where the judges went. Gordon went to visit Ashley in her hometown of Opalaka, Florida, to see her parents and to see where her ideas may have come to life. A farmer's market that had lots of tropical and exotic foods to be used. Oh, how exotic! Next, Joe went to Nashville, Tennessee and interrupted Jerron's class. He saw how Jerron's students had made an impact on him and how inspired they were from his motivation to win the MasterChef title. That brave, brave man. He's an inspiration to us all. And last, Aaron, who had found his way to Cesar's home. He saw the strength of family and how his muse came from his mother to create his culinary ideas. These three contestants were very determined to get the title for MasterChef, and they proved it with beautifully created dishes dedicated to their families and from the teachings of their mentors. Cheered on by all their families and old MasterChef contestants, the judges were very torn, but chose the next MasterChef. 
We hope you liked the video. What did you think of season 9 of MasterChef? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that gray notification bell to join our notification squad.